Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and we're going to learn how to convert music into keyframes in Adobe After Effects. So this is what we're going to create. Okay, I think you get the idea. So we'll start with an audio file and we'll drag that into a new comp. In the compositions, new comp, you can make it any size you want, any duration you want. Drop in an audio file. This is just an MP3 of something I wrote. If you twirl down audio and waveform, you'll be able to see the waveform right there. I'm just gonna give myself some room here, okay? So that is the audio. Now, next, we're going to use that to affect other layers. In the animation menu, keyframe assistant, you have to have the audio selected down there in the bottom as we have. Choose convert audio to keyframes. And what will happen is After Effects will listen to the amplitude of that. And if you hold this and tap the U key, you'll be able to see all of these keyframes. And you won't see any animation. You'll see these numbers change, and they're changing as the amplitude changes in the audio. We're going to use, we're just going to use the both channels slider. This information is a bunch of keyframes. We can point a certain uh, property, like a scale property, to this keyframe. So when the audio was loud, the scale is loud. Let's start with adding some text. So in the top, there's our type tool. I'm just going to turn that off for now. Click and I'll paste. And uh, this text is very large. I happen to have used it already, but basically this is uh, text that we've got on the screen. Okay, so a bunch of text. And we want to choose the scale property. So if you just tap the S key, there's a scale property, and right now there are no keyframes for the scale property. If you hold the Alt key down on Windows, Option key on Mac, and click on the stopwatch, you will write a little expression. And all you have to do is take this little pick whip, drag it over top of any one of those three sliders, and I'm using the both sliders effect, and you can see it is written that in there. So if you just click down here or hit the enter key on a numeric keypad, if you hit the return key or the enter key on a regular QWERTY keypad, you'll just add more text in here. So don't do it that way. So now if we play this, you'll notice something. It's changing the scale property. And if we open up our waveform, and look at that waveform, you'll see that the amount of scale is based on the amplitude of that. So here we're getting to a louder section, and then it quiets down. Pretty soon, a big bang. Boom. Another one. So really, you could add any keyframe. You could uh, use the pick whip and point it to that other file. Now, just for fun, because we're, we're working with an audio file, I thought, wouldn't a waveform also look good in here? Oh, okay, let's do that. Let me center this uh, first before I do anything else. Okay. So to add the waveform, we need another layer. And in After Effects, they're called solids. So we'll create a new solid, leave it the way it is, or we can call it waveform. And in our 
effects type waveform and you'll see audio waveform if you drag that on top of the layer you just selected you'll get some settings over here on the left and the one that we want is we're going to tell it what the um, audio layer is and the audio layer for us is the mp3 and you'll notice it's also path so if I had drawn a path in here and then applied the waveform the waveform will jump up and down based on the audio along the path. So let's go have a look at what we've got here. I'll start it around this area here. I'm hitting the zero key on my numeric keypad. What did I do? A couple of things pointed to this, that, and the other thing. I could take this whole thing and drop it into uh, Premiere Pro if I wanted to and use that as another layer. Now, I, I want to add the background in here. Let me just move the waveform below the text. And if you go to the presets and open up the animation presets and backgrounds, you'll see there's a bunch of backgrounds in here. So let's grab another solid. So I can use my layer, create a new solid, or hit Control Y, Command Y, and Let's use green crystals. I'll drag that background below everything else. Again, hit the zero key. And we've got our background showing up. Now, if we wanted to do something like change these blocks with the audio, we could also do that. If you right click on the property and choose reveal and timeline, You'll see there's the evolution property right here, and there are a couple of keyframes, but uh, we'll get rid of those keyframes. And instead, we'll hold Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, and drag that property. Oh, you got to remember we closed that other property, so we've got to open up our slider, and now we'll drag the evolution. Pick whip up to the slider. And now let's watch this. So it's going to take a little bit more time to calculate because we do have a radio blur and a fast blur on that background. Now, if you hear slow uh, audio like this, look up in the top corner and you'll notice I'm not playing in real time as it's caching these frames. So After Effects does need to uh, cache these frames. And you see the background changing too. And as we move on, you'll see that now that's an animation that's already in the background, but you can see the background changing there. Let's render some of that. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this beginning part and just moving it over here just to test some of this. And if we look at the playback controls, And if we look at the number pad, you can see audio is selected right here. I'll tap the zero key again. Now the last thing I, I wanted to do, just to add a little bit more fun to this, was if you go back to 
the text layer, and the text layer is the one that's moving quite a bit. If we just turn on motion blur here, and motion blur is turned on right there, you'll notice that it just gives us a little bit more of a interesting quality as it's popping forward and backwards, as if, as if it was realistically moving uh, through there. And you can see that kind of blur, and it actually fits in with the background. I mean, I could go on and on and keep adding things and pointing to things. Uh, so hopefully this helps you understand that you can take something as simple as any audio track, and it doesn't have to be music. It can be a voiceover. It can be just a rhythmic sound or mechanical sound, and then tie that to any keyframe on anything. It's pretty amazing. Uh, this has actually been around forever in After Effects. It's just like... It's something I like to do in After Effects. It's pretty easy and I think easy to understand. Now, if, if you want, you just drop in the in the audio and point to the text and change one property like rotation scale or something like that. You don't have to go all crazy like I did. I just want to show you, hey, once you delve into this of pulling, extracting this information from the audio, you can use it in many different places. All right. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, take a moment and subscribe to Video Reveal. If you want to take your support up another level, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Thanks to everyone who's continuing to support us here. I do appreciate it. I hope you notice that I answer you back as quickly as I can with all of your questions. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.